when early settlers went west in search of manifest destiny, it took them six months to get to their home. In the 1960s, we electrified the concept of human transport, and we got someone from Earth to the moon in three days. As technology advanced, we took the things that we once electrified and cognified them, adding intelligence via systems like GPS, and now we're able to get to our destinations very, very quickly and to a very specific point. I want to take some of that intelligence and apply it to this long walk to excellence. So let's begin. This is your baseline. Everything you have done to this point, your matches, your practice sessions, your tournaments, your weekend wars, has gotten you to here. This is where we start. Right now, you should be focused on your ball controls, your height, your depth, your width. Can you hit a ball two feet over the net, four feet over the net, six feet over the net, and eight feet over the net? Can you hit the ball doubles alley? Deuce side, middle, add side, doubles alley on the far side. Can you hit the ball to the service line, three-quarter court, and the baseline? If you can do those three things, controlling your X, Y, and Z, you have complete control of the ball, and you can play points with any way you want to play. It's much easier when you have ball control, like driving a car, you control the steering wheel, to be able to go 200 miles an hour. So after that, you can start accelerating on the ball, and you can hit harder, better shots to win points. Your movement at this level will be open stance and closed stance. Keep it simple. Learn the strokes, learn the basic footwork. And then your practice sessions, you're gonna be focused on hitting with those controls, and you're gonna be doing serve and return consistency. That's the basics. That will take you up to your second level. This is where you diversify your game. Now we talk about variety of shots. Slices, drop shots, adding spins, a reliable second serve, mostly to the back end. You're going to focus on preying upon your opponent's weaknesses at the most basic level. When we talk about variety, we're going to include volleys and overheads. We've got to complete our game so we have more tools with which to play points. Our movement now is going to be about crossover recoveries, shuffles, and getting the basic split step down. Our practice sessions are going to be about using our footwork to get, into the hitting, to get the ball in the hitting zone between your chest and your thighs. The more balls you hit in your hitting zone, the more stable you can use your core to be stable behind the ball. You're going to play with the concept of one-line risk. There are four places to miss on a tennis court. The sideline, the sideline, the net, and the baseline. You are only allowed to risk one line with each shot. Okay, so if I'm hitting the ball deep, I stay far away from the sideline and far away from the net. If I'm hitting an angle, I play the ball high over the net and keep it up from the baseline so I'm not risking it. If you miss in the right spot, you'll hear coaches out there saying things like, good miss, well done. You missed in the right spot. It's a physical error. We're human, we make them. If you miss in the wrong spot, it's a mental mistake. We do not like mental errors. In amateur athletic tennis, you make a lot of mental mistakes. In pro tennis, you see very few. The quicker you eliminate the mental mistakes and make more physical mistakes, the better player you're going to be. Also at this level, you're going to focus your return primarily on the backhand. Uh, we've learned over the course of the Tennis Congress and uh, watching professional tennis that the forehand is the dominant weapon in tennis as a whole. If you can get the return to the backhand, you're putting yourself in a great advantage. That'll bring you to the next level. Up here, we're focused on improving our arsenal. We're building a weapon, okay? Whether that's a forehand down the line, a backhand down the line, a serve, movement, whatever it may be, it's a way you want to end points. And that coincides with the pattern you play. You can have a specific pattern that will set up your weapon. You're going to use that point as often as possible. Because you're using more of the court now to set up your weapon, you may be using a forehand angle to set up a forehand down the line, a backhand down the line to set up a forehand down the line, a serve out wide to set up a forehand down the line. Because you're taking players out wide, the game is going to get more horizontal and less vertical. You're going to need more athleticism. You're going to be more focused on your movement. You're going to make sure your bodies are warmed up before you compete. This is the level where you can no longer just walk out onto the court and start playing. That's where injuries happen. Your practices are going to be focused on the quality of your shot. Every ball you hit should push a player back or push a player off the court. Only in the rare occasion will you hit a slice to bring someone in. But the majority of your shots should have one of those two goals. Move a player backwards or move a player off the court. The second part of your practice should be focused on the phase of the point you're in. Are you in defensive phase, neutral phase, or offensive phase? And that's going to dictate your court position. 
If you're in defensive phase, you're 8, 10, maybe even 15 feet behind the baseline. If you're in neutral phase, you're 2 to 3 feet behind the baseline. Offensive phase, your heels are going to be on the baseline looking for a short ball to attack. And those phases will be dictated based on the quality of the ball that you hit to your opponent. My opponent backs up, I move forward. My opponent moves forward, I move back. Up next is the service line on the other side of the court. You're continuing your long walk to excellence and we're almost home. Here you're going to become a tactician. You're looking at patterns of play. The last session we talked about one pattern that favors maybe your strength. Now you're looking at several patterns because you're going to be playing a diversity of opponents. So maybe today I've got to work on my forehand cross court. Maybe today I'm in the backhand cross court pattern or my inside out forehand pattern. You're going to have several patterns so you can compete against several different opponents. At this level, you're looking to add power to your game, add more angles to your game. You will not let a short ball go without attacking it and coming forward. You've rehearsed your volleys, so you're competent on the volleys with the proper grips, and you can hit the overhead if you get lobbed. Movement at this level is about flowing through the approaches. You can do it closed stance or open stance, but you want to be able to work on attacking and playing an aggressive game so you can finish points. So you've got to work on that transition zone and getting through it quickly so you can be up at the net. And then you're going to focus on your footwork once you get to the net. When you're up there, you need to know how to go back quickly on an overhead and cover a lot more court for the passing shots. Your practices at this level will be very, very focused on second serve depth. Players at this level are going to be attacking. They like to play aggressive tennis. You've got to keep them behind the baseline when you hit your second serve. You're also focused on your serving accuracy. It's no longer good enough to play just to the forehand or just to the backhand. You've got to have a body serve. You've got to have a serve that takes them off the court and extends them out beyond the double sideline. If you can do that, you're ready for the next level. Here we are at the final step, and I call this the art of war. This is the defining feature of higher level players. They play the big points well. You'll hear that on the ATP and WTA tours. You'll hear that from national champions. And you'll hear that as to why one player won versus another player who is just as good as that player. So big point plays are, what am I going to do if I'm serving at 6-5 in the fifth set tiebreaker at Wimbledon and $3.5 million is on the line? Where am I going to hit my serve? Where am I going to hit my first ball? And what do I want to do to finish the point? That's how you play the big points and you know your game. Also at this level, you're going to make adjustments in matches. Do you have to grind a point out? Do you have to get more aggressive? Can you beat a player changing hitting zones? Does the ball need to be above their shoulder, below their knees, in their zone, outside of their zone, extending them out beyond the doubles alley? You might play against someone's court position. If they like to be 15 feet behind the baseline, maybe you're hitting short slices to bring them forward. If they like to be tight on the baseline, maybe you're focused on depth or a heavier ball. The point is that you're making constant adjustments to make the person on the other side of the court uncomfortable. Your practices at this level are going to be return packages. And what that means is you have six opportunities to break serve in a set. Every time you come out, you're going to decide between blocking the return back, stepping back 10 feet and hitting a high, heavy, neutral return down the middle, attacking the return to get ahead in the point, maybe even returning and coming to the net. You're going to have to develop those things on the practice court to make sure you can implement them during match play. The game at this level becomes much more about first strike. Your serve is big, it's effective, and it's well-placed. That's going to lead to a lot of short balls and attackable opportunities. The goal here is to get ahead in the point. And the way we define it is after the serve and the return land in the court, whoever is ahead will probably win the point. If the returner is not effective, the server should win the point because they're going to be ahead. If the server hits a great return to put the server on defense, the returner is going to be ahead in the point and should probably get to a conclusion. And before we finish, I want to talk about perspective. At the beginning, we started on that baseline, and we would look at a player like this and say, wow, this player is unbelievable. But I want you to imagine this player looking back and saying, all, with all of the tools I have, with the knowledge that I have, with a complete understanding of my own personal game style, I know I'm going to defeat all the players pre previous to this level. So the question is, can you take the mindset of this player and begin implementing it even though you're on the other baseline? And if you can do all of that, you get to come here to your new baseline and the launching point for your next long walk to excellence.